Hey everyone, uh, Don here with Paleo Tracks. Um, I'm out in Utah, uh, out in the uh, kind of the western side, the northwestern side of Utah, uh, maybe more like central. I'm still south of uh, the uh, the Great Salt Lake, but um, yeah. So I'm out in the woods the next couple of days. Uh, I spent the last night out here uh, in a nice little shelter not too far from here. But uh, one thing I wanted to discuss with you and uh, kind of show you is how you go about making a cutting tool when you're out in the wild. In this day and age, uh, nobody likes to go hiking, nobody likes to go camping, nobody likes to go backpacking, nobody likes to go to practice survival skills unless they have a, a knife or an ax or a hatchet. And that's fine. Everyone has their, you know, their own capabilities and it's good to train to those. But what happens if you are in that emergency situation or you are in a you know, a primitive living situation, and you don't have that fixed blade, uh, you know, high carbon steel knife, what can you use? Well, that's going to be one of the things I want to show you today is uh, how you actually, uh, how you actually go about doing that, how you find a stone, turn it into a workable uh, edge for you, and then get the job done. All right, so I'm back with a couple stones. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna open a couple of them up. I did some field testing. Some of them look pretty decent. Again, I'm looking to create a working edge. I'm not looking for um, you know obsidians or dacites or high grade cherts. I'm looking for a stone that breaks relatively uniformly. There's not a lot of imperfections on the inside. And I can create a simple stone tool, a working edge, whether it is uh, as a chopper or some sort of small hand blade or or stone drill. Again, I'm looking to make tools. I'm looking to make resources uh, out of a very common resource that's on the ground. So, all right, so I definitely got a couple stones here. Uh, one thing that is very, very important whenever you're trying to field sample stones or you're you know, picking rocks up is make sure you do it uh, slowly. What do I mean? There's always snakes. Where you kind of saw me down in that gully over there and over there uh, with all those rocks. A snake could be hiding underneath any one of those rocks, centipedes, black widows, any sort of uh, you know venomous creature. So, what I recommend is you you know you take a step, you listen. You take a step, you listen. You hear for rattles. You look for any sort of indicators that there is a potential threat underneath that stone. So, uh, make sure we do that anytime we're looking at stones. Another important uh, tool that is uh, somewhat difficult to find, and uh, you know sometimes hey you know. Uh, nature provides is a good hammer stone a good uh, hammer stone that allows you to field sample all these all these stones whether you're out in that little uh, you know stream bed or that little river bed but you got to find a good hammer stone and sometimes that can be very hard to find but once you find one uh, you want to maintain it because uh, they do break they do shatter and uh, it is kind of your tool to make the other tools so it's just a simple round stone a couple good working edges nothing too soft something kind of decent um, you know, as far as fitting in your hand, a couple different edges, and you should uh, you should be pretty much good to go. All right, so I got a couple different stones here, and as you uh, can see when I was out there, I did a little bit of uh, field sampling. I'm gonna break open a couple more, see which ones I wanna uh, turn into some uh, sort of secondary tool, and go from there. So let's, uh, let's attack this big guy right off the bat. So anytime you're you're looking to field sample any stones again you're looking for platforms you got to imagine that center line that goes all the way around the rock 
and then I'm looking for any of those less than 90 degree platforms that are below that center line. And sometimes you got to flip, sometimes you got to twist, you got to look at all these different angles to really figure out what it is. Now, what I want to do is find that platform, find that area that I can hit, and uh, take a whack at it. Let's see. Let's try this guy right here. All right, so my center line goes like this, right through, and this guy right here is below it. So let's see what we can come up with. Let's give that one a nice little decent sound, nice little ping. There we go. Let's see. And just what I pulled off, that one little edge, I definitely have some uh, uniformity on the inside. There's not a lot of crystals. There's not a lot of pockets. It's not of the greatest quality, but what it can produce is a nice razor, razor, razor sharp flake. Um, and that's a tool in itself. So I'll set that right over here. Let's give this guy a little bit more. Find my platform. There it is. Yeah. Okay. So from this, it seems to break universally. What I'm not doing is get a, getting a big bulb of percussion. That's one of those um, things that you look for in stone that makes it a high quality stone. I'm getting a small bulb. You can kind of see right here on this piece, there is a little bit of a bulb there, but the better the bulb, the more control I have to actually control where those flakes go. This one kind of went in a, in a manner which, you know, will be of benefit. I can definitely use this some. So I'll set this one off the side and this piece right here as well. So those are good to go. Let's try this guy. Did a little field sample, took a chunk off. Um, I don't know if it's the best, but I might be able to create a small chopper. It does break universally in some ways, but there are a lot of little crystals and little silicates in there. And you see me lick my finger and rub it if it's you know, wet all the way across or if it looks indented, you know, if it's indented, it's not uniform. It's, it's relatively rough. If it's smooth like an obsidian or smooth like glass, that's what I'm looking for. this guy's gonna cut it maybe and get some flakes off but I'm not gonna drive them where I want so uh, we'll set this guy right over here with its flake as well uh, let's go to this one right here let's see I can already tell this one just on how it's shaped almost like a blade within itself it's gonna be good now I'm really looking for any cracked or broken spots just like that there was a small little freeze crack in there and look watch it will just kind of come apart doesn't mean I can't use this, but I just need to be careful how I use it. If there are cracks on the inside, you can see you're going to break at all these weird 90 degree angles just like that. So we'll set him over here. This one I picked up because it was already in a nice little chopper um, chopper shape. And I took a few samples and I could, uh, you know, create a pretty decent, uh, you know, working edge to it right off, right off the bat when I was out there sampling it. And any less work you have to do saves calories, saves time. There we go. Let's see. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Very nice. All right. I like it. Set those right there. Small little hand axe, that will work. Set this guy right here, finished tool. Let's break into this one. There's my field sample, doesn't look too bad. Relatively universal, 
Not a lot of cracks on the inside. Not a lot of crystals. Let's we'll see what we can come up with. It's a nice little blade right there. Set this right there. get an edge but uh, not much beyond what I'm gonna get right there so I just I just struck that and it's gonna take a chunk off but it's not breaking uh, in too much of a direction that I really want but I can definitely put this in a the possibility pile for the most part it has some qualities but uh, not the best so Sit that guy over there. All right. All right. Let's go back to this one. shock for you. Yeah, this is going to be hard to reduce. It's not the best, but... There's a nice little knife. You can see how straight that edge is, how sharp that edge will stay. Rough up the back side. Right there. Let's have a little, little Ulu knife. Doesn't have that round edge, but definitely has a nice sharp working edge that I can definitely process game with um, and a variety of other unique tasks. <laughs> 